LinkedIn, we are going to fire up your Monday. With Steve Spiro, the Master Connector. I am Steve Spiro, the Master Connector. Over the next hour of this Master Connection series, we will take a deep dive into the different ways to connect and network effectively. See us and hear us right now. So LinkedIn, we are on here. We're getting ready. Hear from experts along with Steve Spiro, who went from being shy and introverted to the Master Connector. All right, all right, LinkedIn, you know what it is. Let us know where you're viewing from. We want to know where you're viewing from. We want to check in with you. So excited. We're going to be talking about more productivity in half the time today. Getting really excited uh, to talk to our guests. We have Teresa Safali. We have Don Wetmore, the amazing master connector himself, Steve Spiro. And without further ado, I'm going to get us started and start with our intros. Let us know where you're viewing from. We always love seeing where everybody's, whether you're Texas, we got Philippines in the house, Canada, uh, all our New York folks. We love seeing where you are tuning in from. Stanford, Connecticut in the house with my man, Steve Spiro. We're going to fast forward right into his intro. Steve Spiro is a martial arts black belt and a master networker. He has moved from being a shy, introverted kid to the master connector he is today. Steve Spiro began his business career starting his first company. was an advertising company in NYC. He had an incredibly fulfilling career in advertising and marketing, but eventually pivoted to the technology industry. Today, he is a certified customer communications consultant with Quadient, where he consults and mentors companies to help them find more effective ways to connect with their customers. Steve Spiro believes in the power of mentorship, growing oneself through self-development, and continuing to create meaningful connections through building a large network. Welcome to the stage, the master connector himself, Steve Spiro. Thank you, sir. Appreciate you, Cameron, being the the, the host here, the co-host here with me, the, the Wizard of Oz behind the curtain. Thank you again, my friend. I love uh, being uh, partners in crime on this. So, uh, so hey, folks, it's Steve Spiro. The Master Connector, Cameron and I really appreciate you tuning in here. Uh, we're now every Monday, 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We come at you live and direct with engaging content on how you too can be a Master Connector. During this Master Connection series, each week our goal is to gather subject matter experts to impart their wisdom on us. Welcome to the show. Uh, I'm very blessed to have my co-host and partner in crime, Cameron Toth. Cameron is the host and founder of BizDev Live. Cameron Toth founded... Uh, Toth Event Staffing in 2011. Toth, sta to event sta Toth Event Staffing is a hospitality company providing staff to caterers, cafeterias, and catering departments in Westchester, New York, and New York City. BizDev Live was founded in 2020 with interviews starting back up in mid-September. BizDev Live takes Cameron's ex entrepreneurship experience and combines it with his passion for helping young people and business-minded professionals. Toast's mission in life is to is increasing access to education and opportunity for all people. So pretty, please bring back to the stage my man, the co-host here, and my the Wizard of Oz here, Mr. Cameron Toth. Steve Spiro, thank you for that. We got some folks tuning in. I love, I love, I never get tired of seeing everyone where they're tuning in from. We got Charlotte tuning in from Atlanta, Georgia. Susan Knoll from Collinville, Illinois. We got Chad tuning in from Milford, Connecticut. Uh, really great. Please keep uh, letting us know in the chat where you're tuning in from. I'm tuning in from the Highland, New York. I know Steve is tuning in from Stamford, Connecticut today. Uh, we're going to introduce our folks and they can let you know where they're tuning in from when they say hi. Uh, I'm going to go right over to our first guest, Mr. Don Wetmore. Don Wetmore, 30-year career as a personal productivity coach, completed over 3,000 presentations for over 100,000 people in 10 countries, author of eight books, including the Productivity Handbook. Please welcome to the stage the master of productivity himself, Mr. Don Wetmore. Absolutely thrilled to be here. And we, uh, we, uh, I'm, I'm just feeling like a box of fluffy ducks. I'm so excited to be on this uh, on this show. And, t and tell us where you're tuning in from. I'm coming. Oh, I'm uh, from uh, 
uh, uh, Stratford, Connecticut. Stratford, Connecticut. So we got some more Connecticut folks in the house. So Chad, you got some companies and uh, Steve, you got some company there. All right. And then uh, I'm going to fly over to Teresa here. Teresa Safali believes that when you do only what truly matters in your business, you win every day. She is the CEO and founder of Daily Achievers, where she helps service-based solopreneurs focus on the right work so they save time and business gets easier. Teresa offers private coaching, group programs, and digital products. And finally, Teresa co-hosts the Messy Desk Podcast, where she and Megan Monaghan discuss everything marketing productivity. You can find her anywhere you listen to podcasts. Please welcome to the show, the other master of productivity that's joining us today, Miss Teresa Safali. Thanks for having me today. I'm super excited to be here and I'm totally stoked that I'm here with Don. Lucky me. All right. And where are you broadcasting from? Down the street from you, Cameron. Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> so so we got we got an even crew here uh, from the Me Westchester too. area. Um, glad, glad that uh, everybody is here with us. Uh, keep letting us know where you're tuning in from. We're going to get this conversation started, right? We're going to talk about productivity. Steve, get us started off here. Uh, I know you wanted to jump into this topic, talking about the importance of productivity. Take it away. Uh, 2020 theme song now a 2020 theme song right you're on mute so it's it's a i think it's a very engaging incredibly important topic it's always been important you know productivity time time uh, event management on the i don't like saying time management because we don't manage time right we we manage the events and the calendar in our life um but i think with covid and and now you know with everything going on in people's lives i think time and and how it would be more productive is more important now than ever. So, um, you know, I, I uh, we've hand selected, you know, these incredible uh, two uh, masters, if you will, right? And Teresa, maybe we should call you a mistress. I don't know. Uh, the master sounds very manu- ma- masculine, but anyway, we're we're excited to have them. And I, I know each of you have your own story. Uh, Don and I were looking to do some some collaboration a while ago, and I was extremely impressed with his credentials, being an, an attorney and just incredibly productive guy. And then Teresa, obviously know her through networking, through Master Networks, had a chance to interact with her a bunch of times. And I know each of them have a story to tell on what kind of kind of prompted them to to really, you know, be more focused on productivity and, and how you manage your, you know, the events in your life and, and so forth. So I'd love to hear, you know, a little bit about you guys and and kind of what what motivated you to, to, to actually get in this uh, in this kind of line of work. So I want to know who wants to jump in first. And we, you know, we want to know a little bit more about our panelists and maybe share a story on how you realize you need to get a better handle on time and be more productive. Who wants to jump in first on that, Teresa or Don? I'll jump in. Um, Go ahead, Teresa. Thanks. Um, You know, I started my productivity journey not that long ago, uh, back in 2015, when I found myself as a raging workaholic, I was working 16 to 18 hour days, um, solopreneur, trying to do all the things and keep up with all the latest trends, distracted by every shiny object. There was nothing that was off limits. And it was really affecting my health, my relationships, and a bunch of other things. So, um, so my first thought was, I just need to be more productive. And at the time, I didn't really understand what that meant. Um, I thought it was just about doing things more efficiently. If I can just get this 10 hours of work done in two hours. And eventually I learned that that's only a teeny itty bitty part of productivity. It's really more about doing what's effective. I love that. All right, Don, you want to jump in? Yeah, I kind of fell into this um, sort of by accident. I, uh, uh, I'm an, an accountant by background. You know how accountants are. They're so sensitive to time and hours and counting the beings and all that sort of thing. And <clears throat> excuse me, after <clears throat> after a college, uh, I decided to go to law school and uh, full time. And uh, uh, so I was admitted to law school I was up in the Boston area. And uh, along the way, uh, before I started law school, uh, I was introduced to a, uh, an MBA program. Uh, and uh, with my business background, it would only take 30 credits, no thesis. I said, I'm there. So I'm doing two graduate programs now at the same time. And well, I had I had to have some uh, 
uh, income. I, I had to pay for it. I had all these tuition bills. So I had some businesses on the side. I had a, a little income tax practice. I was sort of like H&R Wetmore. And also I had a real estate office uh, selling uh, houses on the weekends. So I had about 15 agents working for me. And I uh, also had a real estate management company and a real estate mortgage company. Oh, I was also uh, uh, taking private pilot's lessons in my spare time because I think we all have uh, hobbies. And in the midst of this, my wife and I were starting our family and uh, I wasn't working weekends. And that's a true story. And I sometimes start my, my programs with that story. And I don't tell that story to impress, but really to only express the lesson that I learned that, that our capacity to accomplish things may be a lot higher uh, than what you and I have been led to believe. And so... <clears throat> Having graduated from law school and so forth, I got into consulting, got into coaching, and this has really been my full-time job. I uh, do a little bit of law practice and all that, but taking that message out there and showing people how to get significantly more done in, in less time. This money, this sort of time is like money. You know, we're all given 168 hours a week and uh, everybody doesn't achieve the same results, but by achieving greater results, it means by spending that time a little bit differently. I love that. And I, I think one of those things, you know, we're probably going to get into today is like that flow state. And we all know, right, when we get into that place, we've all been in there, you know, at some point in our life where we were just knocking things out. And then there's other times where things just seem to take longer. You know, the day goes by and we don't feel like we got all the things that we got done on our list. Right. You know, and, and so I think you know, for the folks that are tuning in today, I think people know, right, they could be more productive, right? Uh, what are some of the biggest challenges and excuses we all make that stop us from being productive? Steve, you want to jump into this and then I'll let uh, Don, Teresa, let me know who wants to go next in the, in the private chat here. Go ahead, Steve. Yeah, I mean, you know, certainly, uh, you know, Don's story, right? You know, he kind of alluded to it, right? People were busy like a badge of honor. And I think they, they let the busyness of their life just get in their way. And I, I think the, the biggest thing that I've seen, especially, and I've got a heart for the younger generation, the, the 22 to 35 age group. And, you know, th that, that age category, there's such a tendency to allow themselves to be, to focus on the urgent versus what's important. And, you know, I mean, a lot of times I, I you know, I did a, a blog recently on LinkedIn about my my niece and how, you know, when I, you know, and she's uh, at the time she's 16. Now she's an amazing young lady and she's gotten past this 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 thing that she's she was doing. But when, you know, m my wife and I were looking at, to take her, you know, to go out and maybe have a take her to lunch or something and just, you know, just to, to spend some time with her. And she's like, I got to get back to you. I got to check with mom on my calendar and i'm like so it made me think and i and i you know dealing with a lot of younger folks not just 16 i'm talking about 18 20 21 22 there's a tendency to just be to allow externals and, and other areas to really kind of take them here and there and i i think uh being able to really understand and acknowledge that i know that some of the other questions going to be how do we resolve, resolve that but I think the biggest challenge, right, I've seen right now is just people just focus on what's urgent, right? Okay, somebody just sent me a message on social media. I, I, I got to I gotta answer that message now. Oh, my gosh, what would they think that if I didn't, you know, God forbid, if, you know, an hour later I answer their message, right? Like, like I mean, you know, they, 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 the person's going to be upset with me, right? And meanwhile, I mean... There's times where you can't be on your phone, right? I mean, I know that, you know, in your college, they, they for, they're, they're supposed to forbid you from using your phone in the middle of class, right? I mean, and, and things like that, right? So if you're at work and, and your, your job pretty much forbids you from being on the phone, there's times, right? So it's, it's that sense of, you know, the urgency versus what's really, really important. And if you could prioritize that, to me, that's the big, uh, the big answer to that question. So that, that's that's my takeaway. I'd love to hear what, what everyone else uh, on the on the panel looks, uh, have, have to say about that. Let me share the. So Don, uh, yeah, Don says he wants to share the big picture with us. Go ahead. Yeah, let's let's talk about the big picture of time management. And it's not a, and personal productivity. It's not about the uh, uh, the uh, diary that you have. It's not about uh, the five different ways of overcoming procrastination. Those are useful things. Don't misunderstand me. Okay. 
And I explained it to, uh, to my clients uh, this way by sharing the story of uh, Alice in Wonderland. And uh, recall where Alice goes down to the rabbit hole and she comes to this crossroads and she doesn't know to go left or right. She's never been there before, doesn't have a map. And up in the tree is a big smiling Cheshire cat. She turns up to the, uh, the tree and asks the cat for some direction. Do I go left? Do I go right? Um, which, which way do I go? And the cat asks Alice a very poignant question. Uh, the cat asks, what's your destination? And Alice says, I don't know. And the cat says, then take you the road. What difference does it make what road you're on if you don't know where you're going in the first place? So the big picture of time management starts with writing the book of life backwards. And uh, <clears throat> I, I uh, pinpoint seven different areas of our lives. I call them the seven vital areas of life, our health and family and financial, intellectual, social, professional, and spiritual. And I encourage my clients, my students to take a long view on the last day of your life. What do you want to be able to say about each one of those things? And not where you think life will take you, or, but if you could wave the magic wand and get whatever you wanted, and, and it's kind of a scary thing, but once you've got that picture in mind, you've got that book of life in mind, you know where you're taking this. I, I call it Me Incorporated, the most important corporation in the world. Then you start to work your way backwards to figure out, now, what have I got to do this year, this week, this month, this day, and literally this, this day in order to get there? Because the bragging rights to a nice story, to a nice story at the end of life, that doesn't come to us based on what we've done the last three days of our lives. It's what we do every single day of our lives. Now, one final piece of that. With all of that and all this opportunity that we have in this, the, the land of the, the greatest opportunity, 80% of the people who went to work this morning, on this Monday morning, they didn't want to be there. That's according to the U.S. Department of Labor. In this, the land of the uh, greatest opportunity. And by the way, by, by Friday, traditional pay, uh, payday, it's still about 60%. And I'm not saying this is all about a productivity issue, but I think it's a significant piece of it. So when I'm doing my coaching for clients and going with groups, we kind of measure that and we start to <clears throat> get people to think in terms of the longer term book of life and how it relates to their job. I love that. I love that. We got people uh, commenting here. King Chow in the comments to me, eight hours of sleep is the mother of all productivity. I have a feeling that sleep is not the first time uh, that that's going to be mentioned here. And Don, I, I love what you're talking about because for me, the clearest way when I'm talking to young people, especially to talk about that, you know, making sure that you know where you're going. How do you win a race if you don't know where the finish line is? How do you pace yourself? How do you control your, your, your direction? There's just no way to get to that finish line if you're not running towards it, right? Uh, just an amazing piece. You know, that's that working backwards, right? I, I know where the finish line is so I can start going. But if I don't even know where I'm going, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sitting there. Uh, looking at the chess hour cap, very confused, right? <laughs> I, lo I love that example. Teresa, I know you wanted to jump in. Go ahead. Absolutely. Um, Don, totally speaking my language. <laughs> so um, I think that's amazing. This is exactly what I do with my clients. It starts it, with the end in mind, right? That's where you have to really begin. And I think that whether you own a business or you have a day job, whatever it is, you're a student, you really need to start by thinking. We don't nearly spend enough time thinking about what it is that we want. And when we don't know what we want, we can't create the plan and the path to get there. And that means that we can't then set priorities. So when we know where we're going, we can then set the priorities that we need. And that really prevents other people's priorities from getting in the way. You know, um, and that includes all the social media things, what's dinging, ringing, chiming, buzzing, that's taking us away um, from what it is that we need to do because we've become better trained than Pavlov's dogs. Um, so, you know, getting rid of like all of those notifications is really going to help too. But it really begins with thinking about where you want to go, what you want life to look like at the end of the day. Absolutely agree. Absolutely agree. Steve, I know you want to jump in. Go ahead. Yeah, I mean, I, I love it. And, and, you know, I, we're kind of, I think, diving into the next one of the next uh, questions a little bit. But, you know, I heard it said, like, if you don't know where you're going, you're not going to like where you end up. Right. And and a lot of times, you know, we, we don't you know, we don't think about what where you know, what the, the final big picture looks like destination. Right. And um, I think the biggest challenge, another challenge I see is. And, I, and I'm not, I, I'm big on education. I just think there's many ways to get educated, but the, the education system that we have, what, that asks 
uh, a 16, 17 year old that's probably raging with hormones, right? Thinking about cars and girls and, you know, and, and says, hey, what do you want to do when you want to, when you're going to grow up, right? And to try to get, ask that question is a tough question, right? So having, having that, you know, having maybe relooking at that, maybe, maybe the question more should be not what do you want to do, but how do you want to live, right? And, and understanding that big picture. And, and then also maybe, you know, as, I, as I, I've talked about in other shows, potentially, you know, putting together, I know Don mentioned the, you know, the book of life, but, you know, perhaps having a mission, a life's mission that kind of steers your life and you know where you want to go long term, not what kind of beautiful home you want to eventually buy or live in or what kind of, you know, cool car, the Tesla, whatever. Right. Yeah, that's great. But what about that long term big picture? And if you could have that, then now some of those navigations that you're going to do along the way become much more clear, you know, when you have the the kind of overall uh, end in mind. Right. The, the, the example being if if you knew you're going to go from here in New York to California, you know, the ultimate destination is that way. But but you might take different routes depending upon traffic, depending upon, you know, uh, you know, you, you might decide to stop here in this this uh, state or city along the way. You know, things like that. Are, you're going to navigate a little bit, but ultimately, you know what the end goal is. And I think a lot of times we miss we miss that. So I just wanted to you know, kind of reflect off of what, uh, what Don and Teresa brought up as well, because I think it's a great point. I love that. We've been talking about some of the benefits of really knowing where you're going, how to be more productive, but what are, what are some of the benefits that you've seen as you've begun to really take your own advice, get organized, get more productive? Uh, Teresa, I know you wanted to jump in. Go ahead. Sure. So, you know, reminding everybody that I was a raging workaholic, so I am definitely recovering. And now that I know what it feels like to not be running around like a chicken with my head cut off 24 um, seven, there are really clear benefits to that. I have less anxiety, less stress. I sleep better. Um, I have more time for self-care, which also just kind of, it ends up being cic cic circular. Yeah. Cyclical. I think that's it. Where, you know, the other things that I've been able to do take better care of myself, um, take better care of my friends and my family has helped improve relationships. And overall, I'm just generally happier. And I get things done that need to get done. And I don't stress about all the other things. So there and there's tons of other benefits. I could talk all day about that. <laughs> I, I love that. And I think sleep, you know, we, we talked about sleep before King Chow in the comments talking about, and I just want to take a moment to, to shout out some of the folks. Again, we have more people checking in from other states. Angela Hill uh, from Anderson, South Carolina. We have Florida in the house with Corey Mitchell, Porn St. Lucie. Uh, we got Cindy Cohen from Lubbock, Texas. We have Daniel uh, Pump. Peel, I think you said, Philadelphia, PA, Sean checking in from Huntington, New York, Roland uh, from Richmond, Virginia. Uh, really appreciate it. Let us know where you're tuning in from. I know King Chow, we were, I just was hanging out with King. Uh, we met uh, first time uh, in person uh, ever this weekend. We were having some good uh, Mexican street food in Queens. Uh he is checking in from Lower East Side. Uh, so, so good to, to hear from everybody, see everybody. Corey Mitchell says, this is gold. Thank you. We appreciate that. Sleep, right? It is one of those things. And, and we come back to it on this show time and time again. If you don't have your body working right, the exercise thing, the the, the stress, how are you, how are you living? If you can't sleep because your list is not getting done or completed, that's going to affect your next day. And that's going to roll into the next day. And that's going to roll into the next day. So you can't really talk about productivity without uh, talking about health. Don, I, I know you want to jump in. I think Steve wants to jump in. Uh, I'll let you guys fight it out. <laughs> the, uh, the issue of sleep, three out of people, three out of five people, Three out of four people, <laughs> I'm gonna get my number right here. 
uh, two th 75%. Three out of four people complain on a regular basis that they're flat out tired. And there's a bunch of reasons for that, but you're absolutely right, Cameron. If uh, you, you're not filled with all kinds of energy, uh, you're not going to be the family person you want to be. You're not going to be the uh, uh, employee. You're not going to be the friend and all of that. So that <clears throat> that's one of the things we, we really look, uh, look to do. Uh, and, and helping our clients to find that. I think the biggest benefit though of, of doing this and, and being productive and so forth and creating that balance in each one of those seven uh, vital areas, uh, it's, it's the benefit of living life on purpose and <clears throat> without re regret. Now I'll give you just one quick case, uh, case study of, of some of the things that, uh, that I do in terms of productivity because it, it affects many different aspects <clears throat> of, of life that, that need attention. And I was working with a contractor and um, he was um, just all by himself with a pickup truck and uh, he was grossing about $120,000, uh, but he was netting out about $20,000. And uh, so over the course of a year, we started to get him in line. He wasn't sleeping well. He was out of balance with his um, um, uh, marriage that was facing a, a, a very uh, unpleasant uh, consequence and uh, wasn't spending time with his kids. Today, <clears throat> uh, he ha has a business now. He's got three employees. He's grossing this year $500,000. His net profit is $120,000, which is more than his gross was uh, before we got started. He spends time with his family. His relationship with his wife has never been better. And before, in that circumstance, he was working 75 hours a week. He's working 45 hours a week. And all the other time is for life balance. That's the reward. And everybody gets to pick and choose. I don't believe that productivity is a standard uh, for everybody, everybody makes the same amount of money and has the same degrees and all that. No, no. I think the most productive people in the world are the ones who can get up in the morning or go to bed at night and go through those seven vital areas and rate their performance on a scale of one to 10, 10 being perfect. And if, if they're getting up to those high numbers, they're the most productive person in the world. I can't say anybody's not productive because you don't have a certain bank account or anything like that. That's an amazing story, too. And I think that's, you know, you hear that. I have Lynn Rowe, uh, who, who's a part of my local master networks chapter. And I think that's part of her, her spiel every week is that, you know, there's a lot of people that make money in their business, but they don't necessarily take more money home than if they were just had a regular job and, and working out. And sometimes there's benefits to it. I know certainly for me, uh, I may not make the most money in the world, but I get to spend a lot of time with my family. It's something that uh, I've enjoyed uh, and I have good work-life balance because uh, I'm a natural workaholic. So working from home works for me, um, you know, and that's going to change. I I, I I see that note, Steve, with the audio lag. So I'll, I'll flip things around here. So I'm not lagging, but I wanted to get into this. Um, uh, and I know you wanted to go, Steve, but I also want to throw this out there. What are some of the things that people can do to be more productive? What are some, uh, obviously get enough sleep. We, we talked about that. What are some other things people can do to make sure they're getting more productivity out of their day? Go ahead, Steve. Yeah. So I, I just wanted to share a couple of things, right? I think now more than ever, with uh, what happened over the last 15, 16 months with COVID, I think people are starting to understand that the model of, I mean, Don is the, is the epitome of this, right? He had like six or seven things he was doing at the same time, but more and more people are understanding that, you know, to really make it, if you want to make it financially, to have that sort of security, you need to have multiple ways, multiple revenue streams. I think it was Warren Buffett who said, you know, seven revenue streams in order for you to be successful and to be uh, financially uh, stable and, and secure. And I think we're understanding that. But I think the challenge now is and the, and the feedback I hear when when that conversation comes up is, well, you know, I, I don't think I could be I could I could be very productive. You know, I'm, I, I, you know, I'm very good. At, I have to focus. And to that answer, I say, OK, well, that means that you never make it to the gym and you're not getting in shape. And that means you're you're, uh, you don't have a relationship, you're not married, or you don't have a girlfriend because you can't focus on that, right? You can only do your job, right? And that's not true, right? Because we all know how to compartmentalize, right? Um, I think that, that, so that, so that to me, I was at a place, honestly, where at one point in my life where I was, I was busy. I was wearing busy like that badge of honor I spoke about earlier, right? I was busy. I had three or four things I was doing. I find, I kind of felt like I've, I've used this analogy before, like I was driving on, you know, some amazing, beautiful, windy Vista roads, driving some really cool cars, you know, having a blast, um, 
busy, but, but, you know, excited and, and nobody had asked, you know, no, you know, I, I never, I didn't know where I was going. If you had asked me where are you going, I had no clue. Right. So for me, what happened was a mentor came in my life and, and that was a big piece of the change for me. Now, maybe it's a business coach, maybe it's someone like Teresa or Don or, or, or whatever, but I, somebody came into my life and he asked me that big question. They're like, where do you want to be? Where, how do you want to live your life? In other words, what's your destination? And, and then we talked about and worked on time management. And, you know, again, I, you know, I've heard it said, you know, you can't manage time. So I try to avoid that phrase. I know, Don, you're big on it. It's okay. But, but calendar management or event management, where I, I look at, you know, putting, you know, for me, it's a matter of you look at what's important and uh, you, you, you put the big rocks in. I, you, you probably heard me some of this, some of you guys who, who follow me could have probably heard me tell a story about time management where there's this professor that was in a shop class and the, the students were belly aching about, you know, the, the, all the work they had and they were so busy. And, and he, and he, the next class, he, he had a, a table with a big, large glass beaker and a, a bunch of rocks on the side of the glass. And he put the big rocks in the, in the beaker. And uh, he asked the class at the end of it, he said, are you, um, you know, do you think that the, the beaker's full? And of course, everyone raised their hand, sure it's full. And then of course, what happened is he grabs from the, under the table, some, some pebbles and he poured the pebbles into the rocks and they worked their way into the crevices. And he asked the question again, and people started to catch on. So most people said it was full. Then he pulled out gravel, then he pulled out sand, then he pulled out, you know, uh, and then he, well, at the, he stopped at sand and everyone said it was full until he pulled out a thing of water and he poured the water in. And, and the point is that a lot of times for us, we, we start with the gravel, we start with the pebbles and we try, we can't fit the big rocks in. So if you understand where you're going and the big priorities in your life and you make sure those fit in first, you could, you could get a lot done. I mean, Don is, you know, Don, Teresa, you guys are examples of that where you've been able to take, take a lot of stuff going on in your life and make it work. So for me, once that happened, number one, amazing productivity. Number two, amazing peace of mind. I, I, I had, I felt like all over the place. I felt like, you know, I, I, I constantly had to do something. It, 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 when I put it in my calendar and I live and die by my calendar, things have gotten, there it is, look at that. Thank you, thank you, Cameron. Um, but when I, when I do that and I live and die by my calendar and the calendar allows me to kind of, it gives me, this sense of structure, this sense of peace, and it's it's made life a lot more productive. I've got a lot more accomplished. Uh, I've got a lot more peace in that. And there's more like uh, like Teresa and Don said as well. So curious to hear what everyone else has to say about that. Well, I know Teresa is going to jump in. I just wanted to encourage our audience uh, just to get a little bit of uh, feedback from the audience. I had a couple of questions. One, if you're watching today, and we love hearing from you because we learned so much from you. Uh, we have expert panelists, but you are experts as well. You live life. You're doing a lot of things. Are you getting enough sleep? How is your sleep? You know, are you, do you have hacks for getting enough sleep? And then also, do you have productivity hacks? Are there certain things that you do that you know helps you and others around you get more done? We want to hear from you. We love your advice. There's probably somebody that you can help uh, that's in the chat that's watching the show today uh, by putting your comments in. So we want to hear from you. Please let us know. Are you getting enough sleep? Uh, how are you doing that? Are you, do you have some productivity hacks? We want to hear from you. Go ahead, Teresa. Thanks, Cameron. So um, this is a really broad, like here, throw us some product productivity hacks. There's just so many that you can go, but that you can do. But here the, here's the thing, you have to figure out what works for you because what my hacks are might not work for you. So um, for me personally, I need white space in my day. So I can't have tasks backed up one against the other. I need to have space to get up and, and move around and breathe before I go on to the next thing. Um, I also have rituals built into my day. So those are those, um, you know, like morning routine, afternoon routine. I have a work day ritual that I start with, um, a work day and ritual. And my rituals move me through my day productively so that I have some natural breaks. And I also set up and prepare for the next section of my day. Um, that helps me move really well through my day. Um, making sure that you're not just sleeping, but taking time to eat meals. I used to just 
and I can't tell you how many of my clients um, I find don't stop to take lunch or they're eating at their desk. Breaks are super important. So creating space in your day is going to be so helpful um, in your quest to be more productive. It seems um, contrary because you think that in order to get more done, you need to work harder and put more time in and hustle more. And it's really about doing less. Again, it goes back to, you know, that whole big picture that Don was talking about earlier, that you really want to understand what you want life to look like so that you can then make the right choices and focus on what matters in your day, what's going to help you have, do, or be what you desire. I love that. Don, I know you wanted to jump in. Go ahead. Yeah, one of the, <clears throat> the routine that I follow is, is, is very helpful for me in, in maintaining my productivity. And it's about creating a foundation to, to make this machine work in a, in, a, in a most effective way. I start my day the night before by taking some time and having a board of directors meeting in the most important corporation in the world and do my planning. And then during my planning process, I <clears throat> resolve all my conflicts for the day and I create my plan for the next for the next day. And it's sort of like an itinerary so that when I go to bed at night, uh, <clears throat> I don't have that little guy in the back of my head about, oh, what am I going to do about this? What am I going to do about that? <clears throat> the second thing that I do is I, I make the last half hour of my day uh, on, a, on a very positive uh, note. You know, do some reading, spend some time with my wife that I'm not spending enough time, watch my favorite comedy or whatever. Because how we go to bed emotionally, uh, we the way in which we go to bed at night, it, we carry those emotions through our, our sleeping hours. It affects the quality of our sleep and the uh, mood in which we make up the next morning. That's why when we, you know, we put our children to sleep like a baby, okay? And uh, you're not going to get them all upset. And, and uh, you know, they've had issues for the day and you resolve those issues. You create a nice look forward for the next day. You read a nice little story and um, <clears throat> they sleep like a baby. And those rules don't change, you know, when we turn 18. Then the second piece is when I get up in the morning and I'm an early riser, uh, but I'm very intentional about that. In the first 15 minutes while I'm up brushing my teeth and all of that, when I'm, we're at the highest level of learning receptivity, we're in that alpha level in that first 15 minutes, and we're literally setting the stage for the day, positive or negative. I mean, we, we've heard this expression, oh, Steve, he's having a bad day. He, he got out of the wrong side of the bed this morning. It's got nothing to do with which side of the bed he gets out of physically, but which side of the bed he gets out of emotionally. So during that first 15 minutes, I'm very intentional about that and do some positive visualization. And then <clears throat> the next 15 minutes, I, I do some inspirational reading. And that helps me to get that motion going, okay, and I want to set that stage for a good positive day. And then the next half hour, I go on outside and I walk uh, for a half an hour. And truth be known, I'm actually walking an hour, hour and a half uh, most mornings. And it's the most productive time of my life, okay? And I'm I get out there and just test my senses. I run into neighbors that I never knew I had and, and, and all of that. By doing all of that, what I've done is I've taken control of my mind, my body, and my environment. And I've served as some, if not all, of my seven vital areas. Uh, I've, I've got some mental health stuff, the physical health, um, uh, family, go and walk with my wife, um, getting some financial thoughts. There's an intellectual part of it, my social dimension. And what that is going to do is it's going to positively impact every one of the 5,000 decisions that you and I make every single day in small little ways that are going to leverage our productivity forward. For example, one final example. Let's say I'm, having, I'm working on my weight. <laughs> I certainly can. I can do a better job, but I'm, I'm working on that, okay? And, and I don't do any of this planning. <laughs> I just put myself to bed. I didn't get a good night's sleep. I, I'm oversleeping. I, you know, I hit the snooze alarm several times. The whole day's in, in the bucket, right? And I go into work, and, and uh, there's, uh, there's Teresa, and she's got this beautiful tray of blueberry muffins she wants to share. I know I shouldn't be doing that, but you know what? Damn it, the day's in the bucket anyway. I'll start my diet when? Tomorrow. Give me six of those muffins. <laughs> but do you understand if I went through all of that and, and did the planning and all that, that little bit, and took control of my body and my environment and all that, I'm in a little different position to make a better decision that in the long run is going to significantly increase my productivity, not by spending any more time, by making different choices. Yeah, I love that. I think that intentionality is, is a big deal. Steve, I know you want to jump in. I'm just going to read a couple comments from our, uh, our community here. Uh, Linda says, a planner is a great way for me to stay focused and get tasks accomplished, right? If it's not on the calendar, 
It's not getting done, right? That time blocking is such a big deal. A uh, shout out to Susan Castelli is joining us from Ontario. So we officially got Canada in the mix here. Uh, Cindy Cowan, I, I, I so identify with you when I'm feeling stress levels, lighting some candles, getting some things going. She says, I use essential oils for sleeping, calming my brain, motivation and focus. When I can't rest, I turn on the Sade. I got the Sade. I got, I got the, the candles going right. Get the scent stuff going. I get it all going on, right? Chad says, still need to work on sleep to be productive. I keep my calendar in one place to help me keep track and not double book. Who's double booked an appointment before and sat there and slapped their head, right? That helps me stay productive and I don't ruin other people's time by canceling, right? So, so important. Susan Castelli chiming in. Yes, breaks are necessary. Miss Mama Spiro checking in. Can you stop and take a moment to pause, recharging your battery, take some deep breath? Uh, we got we got to definitely include a little piece on this uh, with vacations, uh, something along the lines of, because that's sort of a... We're talking about our daily routines, but we got to talk about our life routines as well, right? Uh, Susan says, fortunately, I've always been able to sleep well, but there are occasionally those nights when I wake up and start thinking about something that I wasn't able to wrap up by the end of the day. I work from home, so I do have a cutoff time in order to spend time with my family, shut off my brain. I think that helps me get in a good night's sleep. We got to talk a little bit about that and address that as well. Uh, Steve, jump in here. Well, that, that great, Susan. That thanks for the for the intro on that because th I think that's you know we're talking about sleep and I didn't really talk much about it. To me, ninety nine point nine percent of the time when I hit the bed, my wife makes fun. I'm out, out. But there are times, and there has been times uh, more in the past where I where I was you know tossing and turning, tossing and turning. And the best advice that I got, and it, I don't even remember who gave it to me, was to just write it down, like. There's, you're probably thinking about a bunch of things. And what I found is, is that the brain is like, it's like trying to process, like it's trying to remember, okay, I got to do this tomorrow. I got to make sure to do this. I got to, I got to, uh, I, I got uh. And it's like, it's, it's what I found for me. And maybe you guys are different, right? I have this weird brain that's learning this late dyslexic, uh, learn, you know, brain thing. But for me, it's like the brain is just trying to remember, keep constantly bringing it up. So it, I don't forget tomorrow. And the minute, the crazy part is the minute I wrote it down in a place I actually created, like I'll create like a calendar reminder for myself the next day, I'm, I'm out like a baby, like a baby. It's so incredible. So so that's one hack for sleeping. If you're having trouble sleeping, definitely. Teresa, wanted, Teresa wanted to chime in on that. Please. Go ahead, Teresa. Well, 2020 theme song. Here we go. There we go. <laughs> How about we unmute? How many times have we done this? Okay, so just to jump in um, and tag onto what Steve was saying and bring it back to what John, what Don was saying earlier, um, getting things out of your head is super important. So that earlier iteration of myself, um, I'm a creative, so you know we would joke my colleagues and I that I couldn't, we couldn't find the off switch for our creative brain, and even just writing it down um, before bed was never enough for me. I would still wake up with not just what I need to do, but ideas. And um, so creating the systems to move me through those days, through my day, those rituals I was talking about, particularly for me, my work day shutdown ritual, um, where I just pretty much take, I plan what needs to happen tomorrow, the night before. And so when I'm coming in here in the morning into my, into my office, I know exactly what has to happen. And I'm not thinking about that. And it's not keeping me awake at night that, oh, I can't forget this. Oh, and, oh, I can't forget this. Because it's not about all the things. It's about the right things. So I know that when I come in here, I have the right things on my to-do list. It's usually it's usually two to three things that I have to get done. And then everything else when I have time for it. I spoke to a, uh, one of my clients once and I asked this, How, how's your sleep going? And he said, it's great. He said, I sleep like a baby. I said, that's good. He says, yeah, I get up every two hours and I cry. <laughs> That's great. I love Don's sense of humor. It's funny. He's a funny man. Uh, that's great stuff. Well, um, Teresa, thanks for chiming in on that one because that that is absolutely true. And and that was going to be one of the things we were talking about hacks before. A hack for me is is looking before I you know before we go to bed. I, I look at what tomorrow looks like. So so yes, I'm mentally prepared. I know what's going on. You know, I know what time. Uh, you know, what, what's hap what has to happen tomorrow. Now, uh, I, I want to mention, and you guys have heard me, th those who are following me and, and here's some of my 
some of my material. I'm talking a lot about this lately, The 5 a.m. Club. Uh, it's a great book by Robin Sharma, fantastic book. And I'm not quite done with it yet. So I'm three hours, uh, again, you guys know I do Audible. I'm three hours uh, you know, left on the audio book, but it's great. And I'll tell you what, uh, Don, you mentioned it before, right? Instead of thinking about doing something and making a change, just doing it. So, so the book. So, I have a very rigorous. I've, I've I think I, maybe in the last broadcast or one of my actually my last two two far, fighter Fridays ago, I, I talked about my routine. And hearing the book and how important it talks about how important exercise and cardio and getting a good sweat on in the morning is so important. It helps brain activity and all these things. I'm not scientific, so I can't can't articulate it as well as the book does. But I, I, I read it in the book and I was in the middle of my routine because a big, big part of my routine is self-development. So I, I, I read an audio book in the morning as part of my routine. And it said about this, about this. So I did, I started, I said, all right. I'm, so I jumped on my spin bike. I did 15 minutes. I did my 120 push-ups, 120 sit-ups and I was done. And I'm like, you know what? I feel good. And I did it again today. I'm going to go do it again tomorrow. And, and I'm just going to implement it. So some of the hacks for me have been starting your day off right. You know, Don mentioned it as well, right? He talked about, you know, that, that first hour, that first 20 minutes, he said, or 15 minutes, or I forget how many minutes, is super important. The brain is receptive, you know, and there's all sorts of statistics or, or, or studies about how the endorphins of when you work out in the morning, how it, it, it energizes you and gives you energy for the rest of the day. And there's all sorts of great stuff. So having a good morning routine is really, really good. It, it kind of centers me. Uh, I don't feel like, uh, you know, like I, I'll have days, where the once or twice in the year where maybe I've allowed myself to not have, allow my my routine to get interrupted. I am a mess the whole day. I'm, I'm, I feel harried. I don't feel centered. Um, now, throughout the day, I agree, Teresa, you need to take some breaks. I love taking walks. Uh, if I, you know, I, I try to fit that in, um, you know, obviously I just walk in and sit, just going outside and we live right on the water. So I'm able to walk, look at the water. Uh, maybe even if it's just five, 10 minutes, uh, maybe, maybe it's a breathing routine, a breathe, you know, some meditation or, or, you know, just a breathing, um, you know, doing the, the, the deep breathing and, and just closing your eyes and just, I, I agree. But all that is, is to say that there it is, this is the book. So it's a great book. Highly recommend it. I'm not getting paid any money for that book, but that's a that's a great book. And if you get that Teresa, book, Teresa said that Robin Sharma rocks too. I posted that in the chat. That's awesome. Good stuff. Well, that that was it. I just wanted to share that having a good morning routine is super super important to as a hack to making a very productive day. Because again, uh, you know, Cam and I were talking this morning. It's like I was going to bring that now, up. <laughs> yeah, right. If you don't get it done now, it's going to not get done probably, right? Absolutely. It, it's so big. I got some great comments from, from our guests here. Let me just, just get some of these in because these these are absolutely amazing. Uh, Susan Null says, uh, I totally believe for myself anyway, habits and rituals are very important and effective. Uh, for anybody, I mean, we, we haven't talked about uh, the book Atomic Habits today, but, you know, investments, your productivity, all of this stuff, the habitual nature of being – uh, a single tasker, not a multitasker, but a single task, getting it, it adds up, getting sugar, honey, iced tea done, right? It adds up. And when you're able to work through a list, you know, there's a reason uh, there's that saying, you know, I, I don't go to the person that's not doing that, that has so much time in the world. I go to the person that's really busy to get things done. Why? Because they're, they're, they're on task. You know, if you're not doing, if you only have one thing to do in your day, you're spending all day to get that time. I think there's another saying around the idea, you know, whether you got an hour to get it done or 24 hours to get it done, it's going to take you that much. Amount. That's the way we work, right? We, we, we operate that way. We work within the time where, yeah. Corey says, for me personally, it's daily habits. What Don said about having the end goal figured out. And then working backwards really hit home. Daily habits and keeping my personal accountability with where I'm heading long term keeps me in check. And helps big time with staying on course and productive. These are really great comments, guys. I'm try trying to get all of them. Um, I, I think I, I read this one from Susan already. Guys, uh, we, we love hearing it. Please keep keep posting your productivity acts. Uh, I love, love reading these here. Um, 
who wants to jump in? Steve, you mentioned habit stacking. Yeah, I just want to mention, you know, kind of off of what Corey said. I know Corey personally; he's a really good man. And then Don, and then Don wants to jump in. I'm seeing that. Yeah, yeah, no worries. I'll, I'll just I'll be really quick, but I just want to mention having somebody to be accountable to is super important in that in, in being productive, right? Because I think that you know, number one, just knowing that somebody else is actually kind of watching, you know, you're going to do what you need to do. But also, there's accountability. There's a there's an actual extra sense, especially if that person is successful in certain arenas, they could see what you're doing and actually make some suggestions, some tweaks uh, that can kind of help maybe steer you a little bit. So um, I think the accountability piece of that little comment he made, I think is really good there. So that's all I wanted to share. And that's a perfect lead into what Don and Teresa do, because, you know, in talking about coaches, there's a lot of things. And I'm sure a lot of people like, oh, getting sleep and getting exercise. You know, these are not revolutionary, groundbreaking ideas. But sometimes you need somebody to do that reinforcement and that keeping you accountable. And, oh, yes, that's right. I do need to do that. Go ahead, Don. You know, we're, we're victims of, of some of that uh, anti-productive uh, language that we use, uh, different phrases. Uh, the one that's most popular, one that I can think of is the phrase, someday I'll, someday I'll read that book, someday I'll, I'll whatever, as if it was some sort of a destination that we could go to when we get over the hump, but we never get over the hump. Productive people have a sense of urgency about them, and there's a sense of urgency built in because they know where they're going, and they tend to use their time almost automatically, Okay. But without that sense of urgency, without that, that someday aisle, um, we tend to procrastinate and uh, it moves uh, over and never really gets done. I had a, a sales manager in one of my classes and his pride and joy was his little four-year-old daughter. And uh, he was looking forward to taking her on vacation. And uh, so in a conversation, he said, Don, knowing what you know about me and all, all these things, and because I really want to make sure that I take my four-year-old on vacation, what hacks, what advice would you give me? Uh, to to make sure and guarantee that I take my four-year-old on vacation. I thought about that for a moment, and I said, you take her on vacation when she's four years old. If you don't do that, you can't take a four-year-old on vacation. You can take a five-year-old, and that's great, but you never have a second shot at it. You know, I, was just, life, I wanted to capture the nodding on screen here. I think you got a, got a bunch of folks that are just like, yes, right? You know, that's the way only it works. There's only one way to tell your 70 year old mother lover that you got to love her, that you love her. You got to do it when she's 70 years old. Today, you know, another thing that uh, a hack, uh, I mean, a, uh, uh, the language thing, we, we somehow got on our wall, some people, today is the first day of the rest of my life. And I took that down a long time ago. Like, we got a rest of our life going. Yesterday's a canceled check. Tomorrow's no one's IOU. Today is the only day that we have to live. So on my wall, I have a different saying that says, today is the last day of my life. And I don't mean that literally, but it gives that sense of urgency, that precious gift. And that's why they call it the present. It's a gift, isn't it? Today, the most precious resource you have is the next 24 hours. I love that, Don. And I think people have to embrace that in a lot of different ways. Gary Vaynerchuk talks about, you know, waking up and saying, you know, what's the worst thing that could happen and sort of what would my priorities be around, you know, if that happened, what would I feel sorry that I didn't do or, you know, that kind of thing, you know, what, what if, you know, my mother, you know, I woke up and my mother was, you know, those kind of sort of things. And if you can, you can sort of shock yourself into sort of saying, setting some, some real priorities for yourself that not only meet with your, whatever your financial goals and life goals are, but your emotional goals, the ones that, will keep you up at night. The ones that, you know, you will look back and say, man, I wish I did, you know, I missed this moment, right? Those are the things that that really set, the really important priorities. When uh, Steve was talking about the the example of the the, the teacher that's that's putting those pebbles and the, or the rocks and then the pebbles and the sand, and then finally the two beers in there, it all all fits in. And so, you know, if you're, if you're filling your life with those things that don't, aren't, aren't that relevant, we don't have the the time for those things that are really the big rocks that we may not look at your neighbor and say, oh, those are important things, but those are things that are important to us. And at that, at the end of the day, it's, it's us that we have to deal with. I love that. I uh, asked two questions. Go ahead, uh, that, that I asked two questions in um, my, uh, my clients. Uh, question number one, what would you do differently in your life today if you knew you only had six more months to live? You'll be healthy and ambulatory, but no negotiation. You're, you're gone six months from now. 
And these things come, I mean, pretty obvious. I mean, yeah, I'd spend more time with my family. I'd go on vacation. I'd do this. I wouldn't worry about so much about this and so on and so forth. And then they, the question comes, oh, Don, you said there was a second question. Yeah, the second question is, so what are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? A death sentence or some calamity, the loss of a parent or whatever, okay, to do the things that you know you 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 want to do if you only had six more months to live. Now, now practically, if you only had six more months to live, you maybe you're not going to pay your credit card, okay? All right, so let's we'll, we'll pay the credit card and everything. But why can't you spend more time with family? Why can't you travel? Why can't you go into that business? And the answer is you can. I love that. I love that. And Steve put this comment up there. I think this is love that, Don. What more? My mentor said, "What does someday fall? Does it fall between August and September? Right? So when is that day going to come?" Uh, I was putting the question out for our audience here, and I'd love you guys to to answer this, uh, not in just a rhetorical question, but who says one day all? Do you have that in your vocabulary? Are you trying to eliminate it from your vocabulary? I know it's one of the things. I try to get better as a, a speaker doing th these kind of shows. I try to get better as, as a mentor for my children. And one of those things that I try not to say is that I'm going to do it some point. If I say I'm going to do it, then I, I say specifically it's happening on Tuesday at 8 a.m. or 8, whatever it is. Like it has a specific time, not a, oh, I'll get to it. I try not to do that because I don't want my kids telling me that. So I don't want to tell them that. And, you know, they're going to follow your example. I don't know who wants to jump in here um, all over with the place with the, with the conversation. I love I love where the conversation is going. Teresa, Teresa, Teresa looks like she's, got a, she looks like she's poised. Her head <laughs> you. you got some, yeah. Teresa? We're, yeah, we've gone like really broad. Um, I think I just I, I just want to I just want to just add something in that might not be 100% in exactly what we're talking about. Um, just again, getting really clear about what you want so that you can focus on what matters. And when you do that, um, things like setting boundaries is easier to do, um, creating the right habits and rituals. So like, I think um, James Clear says in his book, or he's at least blogged about it, where he says, um, you know, if you're not achieving your goals, um, you probably don't need better goals, but what you need are better habits. And also kind of kicking perfectionism to the curb, the things that keep us from, that make us say someday, or I'll do this when, and then we never get to it because we're waiting for it to be perfect. So those were just some of the thoughts I was having as everybody was talking. I love it. And what I want to do, because we're getting toward, towards the top of the hour here, is kind of go around Robin and just sort of set some some things. I'll say this. I, I wanted to jump in before just on the productivity hacks. I mentioned the whole idea of if it's not on the calendar, it's not happening. So time blocking. If you get one thing uh, from me from this t to the show today, setting your calendar, I think that ties into your habits. It ties into your sleep, right? If you're not setting up your schedule, so you're going to go to bed at a certain time, right? It's building those good habits. Um, I do want somebody to sort of address the vacation. I am not the one uh, to talk about it because I feel like I haven't uh, been been building in the, the vacations the right way, but I'd love for one of you folks to, to address the vacation thing. But as we go around here talking about our, our top tips, and then uh, Don and, and Teresa, if you can let people know uh, where they can find you aside from LinkedIn, we have your LinkedIn address down below on the, the side there on YouTube, if you're viewing this, uh, for, for all the folks in our community that are watching this, if you're watching this, uh, not on the live stream, type in some comments, uh, hashtag replay. We love to, to know who's chiming in and, and following up with us uh, in the comments uh, when the show is being replayed. On another productivity note, I say this all the time, do not multitask. One thing at a time. Uh, Teresa talks about it. She, she's got the, the messy desk podcast. If you got all these different things in front of you. If you got a mess coming out, a mess is going to come out, right? So clear up your space, focus on one thing at a time, knock it out. If you can't handle one piece of paper, you're going through your mail, handle it once. 
Uh, there's different people that have different philosophies on that. But for me, it's either it goes in the file, it gets paid, it gets put into the calendar to get done uh, at a certain time, but it gets handled because otherwise that paperwork just builds on the desk. Uh, that's that's my stuff that I think uh, can help people uh, be more productive. Uh, who wants to jump in here first? Teresa, go ahead. Uh, I just, um, I think that the thought I want to leave people with today is to, you know, spend a little time planning. Um, of course, spend a lot of time thinking <laughs> about what you want. But when you, when you figure that out, you really want to take action, not just keep thinking, but take action. And you do that, at least for me, by creating a plan to get there, right? What has to happen this year, this quarter, this month, this week, today, so that you're focused on the right things that are going to move you in the direction that you want to go. Because when you, you know, if you don't take control of your day and your time through, be it through time blocking or using a planner or some other type of um, scheduler, or writing it down and getting it out of your head, which is also important, then your day plans you. So you plan your day or your day plans you. Um, as far as where you can find me, because I think Cameron wanted me to do that, um, you can read my blog at teresasafali.com and you can listen to the Messy Desk podcast wherever you listen to your podcasts. Love it, Teresa. All right, Don, you want to jump in here? Yeah, let me share a... Uh... Let me secret, a time management secret. The things that you don't do in this world don't count. Only the things that you do do amount to productivity. When it comes to say, say goodbye at a memorial service to our dear departed friend, we don't talk about the things that they didn't do. We talk about the things that they did do. So we're going to leave undone far more than we ever do in this world. But by having that plan of action in that book of life, you're going to focus in on the things that are the most important. That's how we define productivity, not getting it all done, not getting what everybody else does. And, you know, when we were born, we were given two rules. Rule number one is we had to get it all done. And uh, you had to eat up all the food. You had to uh, clean up all your, do your homework and, and do all of that. And the other rule was you had to say yes. You couldn't say no like our two-year-old granddaughter loves to say that. And it's amusing, but uh, you don't know enough to say no. And you have to say yes to your coaches, to your teachers. But when you turn 18, uh, the rules change. And the rules now are that you don't, you can't say, uh, you can't get it all done because now that says a lot of good things about you and I that many have trusted much to us. And so now the one of the most powerful words in our time management vocabulary is the word no. And no doesn't have to be no. It doesn't have to be an arrogant thing. And it, it could be, it's not a priority with me right now. I'm getting out and going with the saying no thing. It's a big deal. Exactly, you know. To get in touch with me, you visit my website. It's balancetime.com, balancetime.com. I've got a bunch of articles on there, and there's a stress test you can take, and it'll calculate your results to see how screwed up you are. It's really fun. And my contact information, you can reach me. Uh, my cell is 203-394-8216. And you can join me in a, uh, I have a discussion group called Timely Time Management Tips um, on LinkedIn. And uh, I'm pleased to have you uh, uh, join us with uh, that as well. I appreciate that, Don. All right, Steve, Steve, finish us off here. And, and I know you want to jump in on vacation, so we get that topic tackled. Yeah, I want to I just want to touch on two things, Don. You, you spurred something for me here. And, you know, I think there's a lot of people that are, um, they talk about intentions, right? And to them, intentions are almost as equally as valid as doing. Like, the fact that they were thinking about doing something in their mind, and I won't say who it is, but there's somebody really close to my life that is guilty of this. And, and I've been guilty of it too. We're, you know, I, I'm, I'm just as guilty, but, but it's doing, not thinking of doing. Okay. So just, just keep that in mind. Try not to deceive yourself on, you know, if you, you, you thought about doing something, okay, that's great, but you gotta, you gotta do it. So, Thanks for reminding me of that, Don. And you did that in a sort of an indirect way, but your point was was well well taken, right? I know there's a story about a, a dress. This uh, lady, the lady wanted a dress, and for years, um, you know, they mean that the, the the husband was meaning to buy her a dress, and and uh, and she finally passed away, and he he brought the dress to the you know, to the. I'm probably butchering the story, but you don't want that, right? You don't want regrets. Um, on the vacation point, I just want to make a, a very valid point. 
you know, if you go on social media, there's a lot of people that that are bragging about this vacation, that vacation. And I'm all for vacation. I'm all for, you know, getting a chance to to take time, time and, and rewind and, and not rewind to to uh, to to reinvigorate yourself, to kind of, you know, reset. I get it. And but to put yourself in three to five thousand dollar debt because you just deserve a vacation. I think that is ridiculous and you need to, you need a checkup from the neck up. Okay. So, so yes, vacation, you could go, you could do a very modest vacation. You could do a bed and breakfast an hour and a half from your house and, you know, spend a lot less money and you could still have that same type of feeling without spending a fortune. And yeah, granted, maybe the social media feed won't be as, as cool as you in like Hawaii, you know uh, you know, with a huge 10 foot wave. Okay, fine. But it's not about other people. It's about you and refreshing. So please don't, don't, yes, vacations are important, but it could be, a, it could be a little weekend getaway. It could be something. Now, if you have the money and you could pay cash for it and it's in your budget, it's a whole nother topic, budget, budgeting your, your, your money, by the way. But if you, yeah, then go ahead, right? Do it. If it, if it fits in your budget, but just, you know, I don't want to just, I'll just chime in a little bit on the budget thing. Like, you know that you want to take vacation. You know that you got bills to pay. Start putting money aside for these things. Start building out those buckets. I think that's a big, right. big way to be productive in your life is, you know, again, know, know where the finish line is. You know you want to do certain things. Start taking the pennies, the dollars, the tens, the hundreds, depending on what your income is and what you're trying to do, and start setting that aside so you can get it done and put it on the calendar. Right, that's what we're talking about today. But if you're if you're in fifty thousand dollar debt and you're going on vacation, even because you put pennies away, I I would get out of debt, get out of debt, and then you could because otherwise that vacation is at is at twenty percent. It's like crazy, you know. Like yeah, you, 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 yeah. You might put cash away, but that cash could have paid your debt down, right? So people are a little bit. They get a little wacky about the vacation thing. I get you need to be. I'm, I'm on my soapbox a bit here, but you need you need to take need to de you decompress. I get it. So, but just just keep I, that I, got, I got to bring up this point from uh, Corey. I think this is exactly what you know on the page of of what you're talking about. Delayed gratification, right? We have as human beings, whether it's trying to control our diet or you know, anything else, right? You know, the idea that we can delay our gratification it doesn't have to be right now and right. it can be just as good, but it can be later. <laughs> My mom always said, um, I'm going to date myself a little bit. We started to go downhill when they invented Sanka. So, you know, the whole instant gratification, I mean, instant coffee became a thing. Yep. Um, everybody wanted quick and easy. So, you know, being responsible, again, that goes back to, proper planning so that you can do yeah. these things without having them end up being um, stressful later. Yeah. Yeah. We didn't really, it's funny. Cause we, you know, we're talking productivity, right? We didn't talk about the, the, um, the five P's I think it is right. Maybe six or seven proper uh, uh, prior, proper planning prevents piss poor performance. Right. I don't know how many P's there are, but yeah, you gotta, <laughs> you gotta, you gotta, you gotta prior plan. Right. For sure. So um, uh, we're, we're at the top of the hour and I want to keep everybody uh, we we really enjoy you. Now this is this is a big deal, uh, Master Connection series. We will be back, but we will not be back next week. We are taking a break, talking about taking a vacation, taking some time to recharge. We are back September thirteenth. We're back September thirteenth with what is emotional intelligence and how can it benefit you? Uh, we have uh, Barrett Lerner. Natalie Gregg and Josh Zepras. We look forward to tuning back in with our community back in September. BizDev Live, by the way, also September 13th. So it's all lining up. September is when it's happening. I uh, hope everybody is getting some rest and relaxation, some vacation, some days at the pool, wherever you are. Uh, if it's super hot, we hope you're getting cooled down. If it's cold, we hope you're getting warmed up. Uh, Steve, lead us out in this crush a bit. Absolutely. Again, you know, we appreciate uh, you, Cameron, you know, for, for running the show here. And obviously our amazing guests, uh, Don Wetmore and uh, Teresa Safali. Uh, great having you guys on. You guys crushed it for sure. And really appreciate that, everything. And and listen, you know, uh, obviously we're not going to see each other, although I will be continuing my Fire Friday videos. Uh, you know, please reach out. Let's let's connect for sure. But we it's our job. It's our responsibility to be the light here. And let's uh, let's make sure we're inspiring people. Every day, 
if you could just make one person feel better, a little bit better every day, how good would the world be if we could just do that? If one person. So let's let's go ahead and do that uh, this week for the next five weeks until we come back. Uh, let, let, let's let's all be the light. And so I want to uh, lead us out here with uh, with how we like to end the, the show. So five, four, three, three two, two, one. one. Cross it. it. Have an amazing week, everybody. We will see you in September. We love our community. Thank you. You make this amazing for us. We really appreciate you. I'm going to play us out with our video. Thank you so much, Teresa and Don. LinkedIn, we are going to fire up your Monday. With Steve Spiro, the Master Connector. I am Steve Spiro, the Master Connector. Over the next hour of this Master Connection series, we will take a deep dive into the different ways to connect and network effectively. See us and hear us right now. So LinkedIn, we are on here. We're getting ready. Hear from experts along with Steve Spiro, who went from being shy and introverted to the Master Connector.